Boo! <laughs> hey guys, it's Carrie Ann from Everything Mom, and I can't believe that Halloween is just around the corner. One of the things that I know my family likes to do to get ready for a holiday, whether it's Halloween or Christmas or Thanksgiving, is to read seasonal books. And that's why I'm sitting in front of this little bookshelf behind me because it actually contains a lot of our own personal uh, holiday books. Usually I share just one book, but with Halloween so close, I wanted to share a few uh, Halloween books or not necessarily specific to Halloween, but books that are great to read around Halloween, you know, something a little eerie and spooky and uh, fun that way that you could share with your kids to kind of get into the Halloween spirit. I just posted on everythingmom.com in our kids book review section a list of 12 books, but I wanted to share with you just a few of my favorites from that list. And one that I talked about is uh, a board book here called Peekaboo, and board books are pretty much a staple for all parents with babies. They're sturdy, they last quite a long time. This Peekaboo is a very cute rhyme because you probably played the Peekaboo game with your kids. So there's the rhyme part, but there's also these uh, little cutouts. So when you're looking at the book, kids can sort of guess looking at the cutout, what, what could this be? Pika what? And flip the page and it's this one, peek a brew, which is brew. And the words are nice and big. And the cutout is just really uh, a great way for kids to kind of make a guess, uh, a little interactive, which is always fun. Peek a boo is great if you have infants to kind of share a little Halloween fun with. Not all books at Halloween have to be specific to Halloween. You can get into concept books still with a little bit of fun theme, like this one from Sterling here. Dining with Monsters. It incorporates the monsters, which is great for this time of year, but also deals with number concepts, but it's such a fun way. The horrible monster black as coal, nice large words for kids to read, and then the bottom part is the, oh, the monster they're referencing. But the great part with this book is kids have to open the monster's mouth to finish gobbled up one spider hole. So finish the rhyme and then you have the number reference, but really it's the opening the monster's mouth and all the pages have crazy monsters and the kids sort of open up and see what the monster has eaten. So what a fun way to go through numbers one to 10 uh, and perfect for sort of this Halloween, October time frame. Or what seems to be big right now with kids is zombie, zombie. So this book here, Zombie in Love, two plus one, certainly touches on that whole sort of zombie craze. Now the great thing is this particular book is obviously aimed at kids, so there's nothing graphic in it. It is sort of tongue-in-cheek kind of monsters. But as a parent, we have to read a lot of books to our kids, and some of them we just have no interest in reading. So finding a book that's entertaining as a parent as well as to the children is always a plus and I think this will be one of those books. Uh, parents will love the whole concept of new parents dealing with the anxiety of you know their child not being what they thought. You know, For example these two zombie parents have a baby that's obviously not a zombie baby and they're in a panic because it's it's not doing things that zombies should do. So something's wrong with their baby. It screeches like crazy when it's upset and zombies screech. So the parents kind of come to some comfort that the, uh, the baby is actually going to be okay. So I think parents will like that part of it, playing with the whole anxiety of your child not quite being or something's wrong because we've all been there. And kids will love the zombie uh, aspect of it. So it's a nice book that actually even you as a parent will enjoy reading and perfect for Halloween. And I think a lot of times we sort of forget how fun it can be to hear stories, whether it's written or somebody shares it or we make an attempt to share our own. Ghost stories are great and that's the nice thing about this elevator story from Groundwood. Although it's one story, a chapter book, a few pictures scattered in it to sort of help illustrate a story that's being told. But I'll, it's one story that takes place in an apartment building. Carolina, who is sort of the woman who moves to this apartment building, 
takes on this role of it's like sort of a being a, a babysitter when the parents go out. With each chapter, she shares her stories that have been passed to her, these ghost stories to the kids. So although it's one uh, book, each chapter is almost contains like a mini ghost story to it. Try your hand at creating your own ghost stories after reading this. Older kids too like this spooky time of year as well. Uh, so why not get them something scary to read? Ghost Prison is a little uh, novella, so it's not, not a lot to read. Um, and it does have a few black and white illustrations again to, uh, to help illustrate the story. These ghosts that haunt a prison are tortured souls, are uh, nasty, mean ghosts, and there's reference in the story to uh, one ghost who was tried as a witch and you know obviously how they tried them was drowning them and <laughs> if they floated they were a witch but if they didn't they weren't but either way they died and ended up a ghost so that's one of the characters in this book and I should point out there is also reference to an offspring from the devil so depending on you know how what you're comfortable with your uh, tween young teen reading you can make that call, but I found this was a, a good scare. It's a little tense. It's a quick read, which is great. So it's not, not a big investment in it. It's kind of fun, but a good scare at night. You know, perhaps getting something sort of scary to read to get back into that spirit of Halloween will be uh, a lot of fun or scary. Or something. That's just five of the books that I talked about in my Halloween read list for this year and I'll include the link below because there's sort of 12 books that I added. Now that's just a off the top. I'm sure there's a ton. You can also find me on Periscope Wednesday 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to talk about kids books so hopefully I'll see you there. If not you'll see the videos here each week. Thanks for stopping by. Hopefully you get a chance to share some Halloween reads in your family and let me know what uh, spooky reads you're reading and if there are any books that uh, your kids are sort of interested in, uh, leave that in the comment below so I can keep that in mind for future book posts that I do. And I will see you next week with next week's picks.